Hey guys, Logan here. The Trial by Fire update 2 is here and I have the notes right here and I'm ready to give you all the info you need, like the biggest tweaks and changes. I've read the whole thing and I've got some things that I think that you need and want to know, so let's go. Let's begin with the changes to the newly released Battle Royale game mode Firestorm. Of course the biggest change here is the new looting system which spreads out the loot and preventing you from stacking. And I know many players have been craving for this since the launch of Firestorm. And here is a change that I actually noticed. Pistols that have been picked up by a player now properly drop on the ground if the player dies. When you kill someone, the player will drop their loot and you can start grabbing his weapons. But up until now, I haven't seen anyone dropping their sidearm. Can be very important to have a sidearm when playing in squads. When you get shot and are downed in Firestorm, you can still fight back with your sidearm. Playing solo kills you right away and it's not that important to have a sidearm. In Firestorm you can find rare flares to call in reinforcements, like the V1 rocket or the supply crates, but this change is for the artillery strike. Added a red outline for the artillery strike on the map to make it more visible. Small but a great new feature that will maybe prevent you from standing in the zone without notice. Around the map there are safes that are spawned in different locations at the start of the game. These safes can contain some high value loot and are sometimes worth checking out. But it takes some time to open them and now they made this change. If the user cancels and resumes the interaction with the safe, it will always reset. Keep this in mind when trying to open a safe. Just go all the way, open it up. And here is an interesting one, one of the new helmets, Napalm, will no longer obstruct the player when aiming down sights. I didn't know this was an issue, but nice that it's fixed. When you start a game, players can now jump as soon as they reach the start of the jump location. This was not the case before, so this sounds good. If you want to jump right away, you should be able to do that. And some option changes, some key bindings for the swap and drop buttons have been updated in the options menu. Nice to be able to customize to your own playstyle, going to need that if you want to win. Okay, moving over to the vehicle changes, and this is the vehicles in the standard multiplayer and not in Firestorm. They fixed a bug that enabled players to use airplanes during the match starter period. The animation when entering and exiting vehicles is now smoother and should have less unintended sudden camera movements. They also fixed an issue that could cause a temporary black screen when you're reloading a stationary turret while using its zoom function at the same time. And some audio improvements to the ability of other players' tanks, so you can hear them properly. Well, this is not much changes to the vehicles, but the main focus was not on vehicles in this patch. Okay, let's see what news we have on weapons, gadgets and specializations. First a little change is to how the weapon and recoil works together with the camera. Change the way the camera recoil works, when firing weapons are allowed to go a bit more off center. The true point of aim will follow the weapon and is not fixed to the screen center. They made some smaller changes to some weapons like tweaked the Gewehr 43 reflex sight to look better and they tweaked the Bren max recoil which was too low. Here we have a nice change that will make players aim a little more and not just spray and pray. Change the way SMG and assault rifle dispersion increase while firing ADS. The second, third and sometimes fourth shot for low rate of fire weapon are now more predictable while later shots are less predictable. Also shortened the time it takes to dispersion to decrease when no longer firing. This means short bursts are a bit more effective while longer bursts or mag dumps are a bit less effective. Now moving over to maps and modes, here we have primarily for the practice range. Fixed an issue with the practice range where vehicles would not spawn when the user restarts the range and some visual bugs in the practice range which would cause the player's body to be invisible while driving the Kubel wagon in third person. As you hear only changes to the practice range. Ok, the soldier have seen some small fixes. A bug when the medic class would result in the weapon floating in air while the player was running briefly after reviving another player. And the first person animation when picking up health and ammo packs have been moved to take less screen space for improved visibility. Soldiers that die in a vehicle are now ejected and can be revived. I must say all these are nice changes but I really like the last one. Up until now you could not get revived if you got killed in a vehicle, so this is a great change. I don't think this includes you getting blown up within your tank, that would probably kill you right away. Ok, let's look at the user interface and the HUD. 
Here I really want to read the first half of this to you because they're all great changes. They fixed an issue where the ticket counter was not visible when playing Breakthrough, Frontlines and Airborne. I noticed that, so that's good, it's back. And they disabled the saturation effect when regenerating health. They fixed the hang that could occur if player looked at the server info from within a social hub while being in your company screen. And the bug which could prevent players from deploying, prompting the error message the class you have selected is violating the server rules, if they have equipped a newly unlocked site. And they fixed the bug that prevented the player from speeding up the bleed out timer when being in down state. Many smaller annoying things have been fixed with this patch and I really like it. Okay, last thing, the PC specific improvements. I better read you all of this because I always get someone commenting and say I missed something in this section. So here it is. Increased maximum ray count in DXR Ultra to improve reflection quality. DLSS is now also supported in Borderless and they made improvements to the DLSS sharpness. They fixed an issue that could cause customization screen to be darker than intended when having DX12 enabled. Fixed a rendering issue that could cause graphical corruption when spamming various player actions. And they fixed a bug that could cause the game to hang if the player mashed all the keyboard and mouse buttons while in key binding menu. The player that found this must have been eating too much pineapple pizza. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a funny one. In Firestorm, opening the map and using the scroll button while inside a tank in the gunner position will no longer switch to the selected tank gun as well. Okay, I think that's it. Poof! That's a lot of info. I know, uh, but trust me, it's not all. If you want to read the whole patch notes, I will link them down below. But if you're still here with me at the end, I just want to ask you this. Do you want to do me some kind of giveaway soon? It's been a while. Give me your answer in the comments. But as always, thank you for watching. Subscribe for more Battlefield content, leave a like and comment down below. I hope to see you all in my next one. This is Logan, signing out.